Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of Steve's, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the Viewerverse, I've come to you with Captain Steve episode. I'm going to be talking about automated robot cars. Yes, taxis, like something in a demolition man. No steering wheels, no pedals, and also bipedal robots that might be coming to households. Yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you've already got thoughts, start, start to typing. But here we go, we're going to jump on over to the old Tinterwebs. And I'm going to be hitting play on this video. Okay, so here we go. Let's hit play and let's watch it, people. Oh, look at that. Gullwing doors. Heck yes. I just hope this music isn't copy protected. Sounds very generic. I doubt it is. But look at that. That looks so cool. Oh, I like it. It's very cyberpunk-esque, isn't it? I guess. And there's no steering wheel. No steering wheel. I mean, it didn't take him far, but I think you get the idea for the concept. Now, I don't think Ian Logan is the greatest speaker in the world, but let's hear what he's got to say while I drink some tea. Welcome to the Wii Robot Party. Sweet! Glad to be here. Yeah. So we, we, have, uh, we have quite a show for you tonight. I think, uh, I think you're going to like it. Uh, as you can see, I just uh, arrived in the RoboTaxi, the Cyber Cab. And uh, there's uh, 20 more where that came from. 20 more? At this event? Okay. So they've been traveling they're all there's no people in them as you can see the car's just going by with no people you're gonna show us them oh yeah yeah you are Freaking we have, awesome. uh, we have 50 fully autonomous cars here tonight uh, so you'll see wow model wise i like that the cyber cab uh all driverless uh you'll you'll be able to take a ride in the cyber cab there's no steering wheel or pedals i wonder if that's going to be the same with like commercial ones that go out to public maybe so i hope this goes well <laughs> i think the the cost of autonomous transport will be so low that you can think of it like individualized mass transit that's cool um, the like the average cost of of a bus per mile for a city um not, not the ticket price because that is subsidized but the average price mm. is about a dollar a mile Really? Whereas the, the cost of uh, cyber cab, uh, we, th we think probably over time, from a, the operating cost is probably going to be around 20 cents a mile. I suppose you need a bus driver, um, and fuel. And price, including taxes and, and everything else, probably ends up being 30 or 40 cents a mile. Yeah. So, yes, and you will be able to buy one. <laughs> Sweet! I like the look of that. Better not have a hefty price tag, yes, though. exactly. Uh, and... Uh, we expect the cost to be below $30,000. Really? Yeah. It paid for itself. We do expect actually to, to start a fully autonomous, uh, unsupervised FSD uh, in Texas and California next year. Mm. You also wanted to be on Mars by and now, didn't you? That, that's obviously, that's with the Model 3 and Model Y. And then we, we, we expect to be in production with the, the Cyber Cab, that, which is really um, hi highly optimized for autonomous transport okay. uh, and probably well I tend to be a little optimistic <laughs> he knows it um, yeah but but mm. in, tw in, in 2026 okay so, take his time span yeah. double it so uh, but it's before only a 2027 year. let me put it that way I'm gonna say before the end of 2028 when, you, when then. you get in you'll see like it's really quite a wild experience to just be in a car with no steering wheel no pedals no controls and it feels great. Something we're also doing is, uh, and it's really high time we did this, is uh, inductive charging. Okay. That's so cool. The rubber taxi has no plug. It, it just uh, goes over the inductive charger Sweet. and charges. Love it. So, yeah. We're going to need that under our driveways, though, it's at high aren't we? Oh, and uh, also... What the fudge is that? What, 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 what happens if you need a vehicle that... Uh, 
is bigger than a Model Y. What happens if it hits a speed lump is my question. There's the, no ground clearance. The Reboven. The Reboven is... Uh, this is a, we're, we're going to make this, and it's going to look like that. Right. You need now, a bit more clearance, going mate. the streets and you see this coming towards you? A hedgehog's going to be terrified. Can't get between the wheels, can it? Splat! So this can, this can carry up to 20 people, and it can also uh, transport mm -hmm. goods. So you can configure it for goods transport within a city, uh, or transport of up to 20 people at a time. With it being that low, that's so quite good gonna, for those with <laughs> the access Roman issues. Is what's going to solve for high density. So if you if you want to take mm -hmm. a sports team somewhere, or um, you're looking to to really get uh, the cost of travel down to I don't know five ten cents a mile then you can use the Revovan. Some people call it the Robovan, but... Uh... <laughs> Needs hydraulics to raise it when it's in motion, I think. So, everything we've developed for our cars, the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the, uh, the AI inference computer, it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. It's the same techniques. It's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've so made cool. a lot of progress with uh, Optimus. Oh, I kind of want one for my own and, home. Uh, as yeah, you can see, cool. we started it with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of dad. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, you're really going to have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Um, so okay. you can have your own personal R2-D2 C-3PO. I have heard, though, at the moment, they're and being piloted by VR. I think at scale. And real the, people, you know? The, you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Probably less, less than a car is my prediction, long term. Now, you know, it'll take us a minute to get to the long term, but... Um, but fundamentally, at scale, uh, the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot mm -hmm. for, I think, probably twenty to $30,000 long term. Once they've been so, trained and, by and VR, then do, away can, they go on their own. Do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. Wow. Um, whatever you can think of, it will do. Well, and yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'd say so. I, I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. I think you could be right. I know I want one. It just depends on price and it depends on functionality. What can it do for that £30,000 price point? I think I'd rather have the robot car to just drive me wherever I want to go. Think of the amount of time saved. Have to hold onto the steering wheel. You can get your laptop out. You can actually do some work. Or you can have a nap. You know, pretty darn freaking awesome. You wouldn't need a driving license anymore. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you could even send it to its own MOT. No worry and have to get the keys and drop them off and then go back to pick it up. Just tell it to come back afterwards. Freaking crazy stuff. The world is changing rather rapidly thanks to technologies like this. I mean... I would still like my own car that I can drive, you know, and maybe go out on weekends for a nice little drive because I like driving and I do like an engine. But all those tasks of driving to work, you know, I could actually do work on the way to work and it could just drive me to work. I could use it more as a utility than a, ple a pleasurable vehicle. And then maybe the driving that I do at weekends, I'd find more enjoyable because it's different, you know? Ah. Anyway, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think of all this. Would you want a robot in your home? Would you like an Optimus robot? Would you like an automated car to drive you around? Let us know. Love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to have my own R2-D2 type robot. Yeah, as long as it spoke English or something. That'd be quite cool. Uh, it won't be able to get upstairs, but then at least you can escape from it if you want to. You know, you need a little bit of a break. Then again, it hasn't got arms, has it? I think I'll probably prefer an Optimus one. But then, what task would I give that? I'd probably be able to do it quicker and safer. I don't know. 
I'd have to see its I'd have to see its proof in the wild before I invested in one, definitely. But anyway, people, that's everything I've got for you. Back to drinking my tea. I know a lot of you aren't fans of Elon, but you know, I'm a fan of what Elon does. Just take politics out of it. Look at what he's done in comparison to what he says, you know. Everybody's got their own opinions of things. And I know that it's not always a point that everybody agrees with, but I do agree that he's trying to fix the world through making electric cars. And his, his solar systems and his battery systems are unparalleled. There's no other solar system that I know of that actually gives the same sort of yield and power that he does. And his actual um, Starlink, if it wasn't for Starlink, some of these places at the moment devastated by flooding wouldn't have connection to the internet at all. Starlink has saved the day countless times there and in remote rural parts of the world and missions and for the army and all sorts, Starlink is changing the, the landscape. So he's done a lot when you look at the things that he's done. I'm still a little bit nervous about this Neuralink stuff though. That, that is... Depends again, doesn't it? You know, if it does help those that have been brain injured or brain impaired in any way, shape or form, I'm all for that. But the thing that I'm not into is the idea that it could interlink with AI. You've got a thought, you've got a question. You want to massively get the answer through AI. It could make advanced human beings and give people that ability to get answers on the fly through this Neuralink. And if you don't get it, then you're behind. You're kind of obsolete. It's like you're no longer on the latest model of Apple. Uh, oh, imagine that. Downloading firmware to your brain. That I'm dubious about. That one kind of scares me a little. So when I say that Elon's done a lot of good, there is potential for Elon to do a lot of damage if he doesn't get it right. And also with AI. But then again, there's a massive race for AI. And I would much rather freaking Elon cross that sh that that finish line ahead of someone like say China so swings and roundabouts people I know he's a bit marmite but myself I like the technology that he's bringing in do I like the changes that he's made to Twitter hmm part of me says well it hasn't overly changed all that much uh, apart from transparency we're going to see a lot more of what went on behind the scenes and we're getting to see how far the tentacles of control go from the powers that be. And if we didn't have Elon at the helm, we wouldn't know that, you know? So, again, it is what it is, people. Anyway, sound up in the comments on Elon. Do you like the guy? Don't like the guy. Do you like what he's brought to the world? Don't like what he's brought to the world. Do you see future issues or do you see future issues solved, you know? It's a tricky one, isn't it? I think he's probably solved more issues than he's created for now. <laughs> you know, the future can only but show us whether we're right or wrong to put trust in someone like Elon. Anyway, salute him on though. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.